Go to workshop is a bit of a mess at the moment, but uh, it's a work in progress trying to get it sorted out. So I've been asked to look at uh, pulling in some CCTV cameras for a client, and it's a fairly unique um, situation because it's going into a, quite a large greenhouse, and um, there isn't power all the way through the greenhouse, of course, there's only sort of like power at, like, at the top end. So um, it's just like a community garden area, but... Um, they need to put in some CCTV cameras um, because of uh, people going in when they shouldn't be going in, getting up to things they shouldn't be getting up to, I'm sure. So um I've been asked to find a way to put some CCTV cameras into this uh, into this area. Um, because of a lack of power, um, I don't really want to get into the situation of running electric in a greenhouse in an outside environment or having to get an electrician in to do um a load of expensive power work so i'd like to install the cameras using power over ethernet or poe um, because that way i can run one ethernet cable per camera which i can do myself quite easily um and um it's just how long they need the cable uh, none of the runs are going to be over 100 meters so that's going to be within the poe specification so i think the longest run is probably between 50 and 60 meters so we should be fine um looking at cameras um I normally use the um, TP-Link Tapo cameras, um, these things, because um, uh, they're quite cheap, they're 30, 40, 50 pounds, and um, they are uh, provide really you know, de de decent quality. I, I, I normally mount them on a base plate in a box, so you can sort of hide the wires behind it, so that's, that's why it's attached to this at the moment. Um, so yeah, I normally do those, um, but we um, will we'll recommend those, uh, just because of the price point, the quality is pretty good. Um, and they seem to work in 99% of the situations um, that I've found anyway. Um, so um, the trouble is they're not PoE, um, and I don't fancy having to run DC power leads uh, down and deal with the connecting like extension leads together and together and together, um, and uh, having a big like mess of wires. So I'm really am determined to get them working down uh, down one lead. Now, um, there are um, passive PoE power adapters available. Um, I've got one down here. What you do with these is you plug this one onto one onto the end of the cable where you put your power. So Ethernet connection goes into your switch. Um, your power cable that came with your um, uh, with the unit originally plugs into the DC power here. And then you run a long Ethernet lead from here all the way down to the other end into this. And it gives you your um, your split off. Oh, I've got two feet behind um, It gives you your split off with your connector on the end. So you can then plug that into the camera and that into the camera. So you can... So at your camera end, you've got your camera here. Camera leads here. Your Ethernet. And uh, make sure you do this. And then it's sort of like over, it goes over the, the one Ethernet cable, back down, back between these to, to the other end, you know. Um, that sort of like uh, completes the goal of the mission of getting it over one power lead. Trouble is, at, at, at the other end, you, you like I'm going to put 10 cameras in. So there's going to be 10 power points, 10 original power leads. The power leads that come on the original power um, boxes, uh, you know, wall warts are uh, enormous um so if i can avoid having to have all of uh, all of those piled up and plugged in a big ball and a big mess probably a fire risk actually um then i'll um then i'll quite happily do that so another thing i found um is these groovy little power over ethernet splitters so um that's uh, one that takes poe from a standard poe switch down to an Ethernet socket and a USB C actually on that one, five volts or three amps. Um, these, this is a uh, this is a 55 by 21 um, DC jack connector on the end. This gives 12 volts at two amps. So I've got the the other side is the 55 by 25 or uh, well, 5.5 by 2.5 uh, millimeter DC jack connector for these. And you only need one end of these because the other end you have a, a standard PoE um, switch. Um, cost of them's coming down quite a lot for standard PoE. You can get a four port switch for like 30 quid now. 
Um, so yeah, we'll dish out about 40 watts. So what I kind of wanted to figure out is, yeah, you know, if you go and buy a POE camera from someone like Reolink, you can look on the website and it says, hey, this camera is a POE camera and it requires eight watts of POE power. Um, with these, you're kind of not sure because yeah, this is a, a generic USB power splitter, and um, I'm going to plug a random uh, non PoE CCTV camera into it. So I'd like to figure out how much power budget I need for a Tapo camera, TP Link Tapo camera. This is a 320 WS. Um, how much power it's going to need uh, going into um, a PoE switch. So I can figure out what PoE switch, PoE switch we're going to buy. Um, one thing I have found with the TP Link Tapo cameras to be aware of is that um, some of the cameras are 12 volts, some of them are 6 volts. So, um, for instance, I've got a an outdoor uh, PTZ camera here, um, which is, um, yeah, it, these are actually pretty good. I had this running in the garden for a few weeks. Um, but this is 12 volts. 12 volts, at, I think the power supply is like 1.5 amps. Um, so that works fine off of, um, off of one of these. Um, however, the, uh, the smaller, like the bunny ears, I call them tight cameras, with the, the wire fly arrows that stick up like rabbit ears, um, these are actually 9 volts. Um, now, I have accidentally plugged it into one of the um, 12 volt leads and it didn't explode. So I think there's some tolerance there, but because the power supply that comes in the box is 9 volts, I wouldn't plug it in and leave it long term. So what I had to do uh, in that instance was found one of these uh, PoE splitters, which is multi-voltage selection, so you can choose 5 volts, 9 volts or 12 volts. Um, this wasn't particularly expensive, it was about, it was about a tenner. Um, for another client who's doing the same situation, I actually managed to find um, these in a 9 volt version at um, AliExpress. Um, only these are like 10 quid on Amazon. The AliExpress ones came in at like 20, 25 quid each for 9 volts. So um, I really want to avoid um, having the unnecessary extra cost of like shipping them in from AliExpress and paying, you know, best part of, you know, 20 quid for a PoE splitter if I can, if I can avoid it. So I think I'm going to use these, uh, these cheaper multi-voltage ones and go from there. Um, so the PoE switch I'm using at home um, to uh, to do the the testing is a is is a one by Unify. I'll pull it up on screen and uh, share it in a second. I'm just going to switch over to the other camera and just uh, show you how it's connected on the bench. Okay, so what I could do with some new uh, anti-static mats because these are a bit dirty. I've had them for about six or seven years and they've been uh, fairly well abused. Um, so I've got this little eight port PoE uh, Unify switch. Um, only the four, first four ports of this are PoE. The other four ports are uh, non-PoE. So I'm using port eight as the uplink to the to the rest of the network. And then these um, two leads are the leads that are currently going to the cameras. So uh, one Ethernet lead comes out of here, goes into the, the base of the uh, multi-voltage PoE adapter, uh, which is currently set on uh, on nine volts. Uh, that comes off out of these DC leads into these adapters. Um, on this particular pass, you can change the tip so it does actually match the, uh, the connector onto the, uh, the TP-Link Tapo camera. Ethernet is in there because uh, if I can, I prefer to have CCTV cameras wired up on Ethernet, um, even though these have got Wi-Fi on them, of course. And then that goes into here, and that is being powered nicely from from this PoE adapter, um, this PoE splitter, and this PoE splitter isn't even getting isn't getting warm at all. So I think that's well within power tolerance. Um, the other port on the switch I've currently got going to a 12 volt uh, PoE adapter. So it's 12 volts up to up to two amps. So got link lights on there. Um, this camera I'm using here is a C500, and this isn't um, Ethernet. This is Wi-Fi only. So the only lead that comes out of it is a DC power jack connector. So I'm not actually using the Ethernet on 
on, on this one at all it's not connected but the switch is still powering it and it's still powering it fine it's just we're just not seeing a link light on here um, we can still see the power utilization in the unified software so we can see how much it's being powered but um, this kind of gets me over the, the hurdle of like not having to run mains power out to where the cameras are going to be um, so I can still run an ethernet cable and power the camera over uh, should I use one of these cameras I mean as it happens with this client I'm not going to be using um, this this type of camera at all I'm not planning to unless I specifically want one added later uh, but I thought since I've got it lying around I'll get it tested anyway um, this camera because I've got the PTZ on it I've got it currently configured just to roam and, uh, and hunt around so every, every couple of minutes the camera goes from in the extreme left hand corner of its visibility pans all the way around 360 degrees to the top right um, and then after a few minutes it, it goes back again um, these cameras have been plugged in for um, more than 12 hours so uh, and I've had the lights off in here um, when I've had the shed closed down um, I've put like a box over the top of the, the cameras to make sure the LED uh, night vision lights have come on to just so I can force the um, highest possible power utilization on the cameras that, uh, that I can get um, just to see what they see what they're using um, so I'm going to hop over now to the uh, Unify camera, uh, Unify uh, Peewee uh, software for the switch and see how much power has been used. Okay, so here I am on my Unify system at home, uh, the obligatory little face in the, in the bottom corner of the window here, so you can uh, so you can see me. Uh, big orange pointer, or big green pointer, so I can actually see where my mouse pointer is as well. So um, I've got the two cameras here. Um, on port one and port two We're currently looking at the power utilization of port one um, so if you you know if you know unify you'll find this quite easily but you just go into uh, your network application on your unify controller uh, go to your topology find your unify device um, uh, that you're connected to your PoE power, uh, switch go to port manager and then on insights you can find the PoE usage for the uh, for the time period by default it's selected on all uh, on all ports but we're, we're going to look at them individually so we'll just untick it and we'll tick port one so um the port one has been detected as a c310 um tapo tp link camera and we can see the uh, power utilization over the last um well since since seven o'clock last night um so i came in at you know around about this time and uh, turn the lights on in the in the in the workshop and so the night vision leds would have gone off for a little while then i went back out again and the power utilization would have come back on uh, i've come in this morning and um you know unlocked everyone everything started playing around uh opening the, the, the blind so the at this point here is when the night vision leds would have gone off again so you can see it overnight then um the power utilization was much higher than it is than it is during the day well i say much higher you know it's it's not hitting the four watt four four point zero here four watts uh line here so i think the closest it gets to is about here 3.93 3 watts which is very 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 low power uh for a uh, you know for a camera i would have thought it would have been significantly higher than that i would have thought at least 10 watts but it's it's not it's you know four watts um and then when the night vision LEDs are off, it drops down to, you know, between two and two and a half watts. I think the highest point is probably there, two point five nine watts, uh, momentarily. Um, yeah, so we can quite comfortably say that the the power budget on a C three one zero or three two zero camera um, are both below below four watts maximum over. Yeah, night, night and day. Um, I we'll change over now to port um, port two, which is the PTZ camera. Um, this is a bit more spiky because I've got the the roaming of the camera turned on and the the pan and tilt. There's no zoom on these; it's just pan and tilt. Um, so you can see when it when it's operating in pan and tilt mode, the power utilization is spiking up. Um, and then when you, when you, when it's not when it's sitting idle, it, the power utilization drops. So this is last night when I set it all up and I had the lights on. Um, then I left the the workshop overnight, and uh, the night vision LEDs would have come on, and it was still roaming, still roaming around. 
Um, and then this morning, the sun's come up, you know, blinds open, and the power utilization's dropped down, but the camera's still roaming, so it's still spiking. So I think the highest point of the day, or of, of the, of the recording here, is about um, five, you know, five thirty this morning, and the power utilization spiked up to seven point two six watts. That appears to be the highest point that uh, that had been that, that had been recorded. So I, I think I can quite comfortably say that the C five hundred Tapo camera, when it's connected to a PoE splitter, um, will use less than eight watts of power power budget. Which is, yeah, pretty good. I would have thought it would have, it would have been higher than that with the motors running, but no, it's uh, it's quite low. Um, what I'll do is in the description of this video, I'll put a link, uh, Amazon link, Amazon affiliate link to the um, Tapo cameras that I use, and the um, the same links to the PoE power splitters that I've um, that I use. Uh, I'm also planning to put an article. Um, for this up on my blog um, and there'll be a link to the description in, uh, link to that in the description below as well uh, I also plan to go through and test a few more devices a few more types of cameras uh, on the PoE splitters and a few things like access points um, that are non-PoE um, like um, I, feel, I feel like I'm going to be with a TP-Link shill now but I'm not Really, uh, I just happen to have a TP-Link uh, Deco um, Wi-Fi access point uh, kicking around here, uh, which is on its way back because it's broken. Um, so I'd like to find out how much of a working one of these uses if it's connected over PoE, um, and I'll compare that to the uh, PoE utilization of my uh, Unify uh, U6 in wall and uh, U6 light and U6 plus access points here. And uh, see see what the power utilization is. Uh, yeah, so more to come hopefully. Cheers.